I have been playing DRG Survivor for a while now, so I think I have formed a pretty good impression and understanding on the game to start talking about it. This is not really a review, so the idea of the channel is just to talk about games. It can be pros and cons of the game, or it can be something that I find unique or interesting, or just simply my experience playing them. Basically, anything about uh, the games that I've played. With that said, let's talk about DRG Survivor. How I first discovered DRG Survivor is actually from a Twitch stream. There's this streamer called Amiro Baru that I watch quite often, and he was playing DRG Survivor at that point of time. Normally, I would put up a stream on my second monitor while I do something else on my first monitor, but the gameplay of DRG Survivor is so interesting that I had to stop whatever that I was doing on my second monitor and start giving that stream my full attention. The second time I came across the game is from a video by Asmund Go titled "This Game Changed My Life" on YouTube. A very clickbaity, I know. Uh, it's a two and a half hour video. I watched the whole thing, and he then released a second video on the game as well.、Uh, that is three and a half hour, and I watched the whole thing as well. But Asman is so bad at the game, and he makes so many decisions that I don't agree with. So I thought to myself that hey, I can definitely do better than this. That's when I actually picked up the game and start playing it myself. So, if you are a game publisher, it's a really good idea to sponsor Asman to play your games because he's so bad at them. Sometimes it makes people actually want to play it. So this is by no means throwing any shade at Asman. I know it's very hard as a streamer to play games and pay attention to chat at the same time. Sometimes they play bad just for content.、Uh, but I digress. For those that don't know what the RG Survivor is about. It's an auto shooter and resource collecting game. You are this dwarf working for a mining company, and you are being sent into this underground world infested with alien bugs to collect resources. You have a backpack where your weapons goes into, and they attacks automatically out of your backpack while you mine the resources. At the end of each run, you then fight a final boss, and that pretty much sums it. For a game with such a simple premise, there's actually a lot of world building that goes into it. And I later discovered that DRG Survivor is actually part of a larger DRG franchise. So there are actually a lot of lore and references that come from a larger franchise. I think maybe that's why I find the world so full of character and interesting. Your character, the dwarf,、um, he complains about the job a lot. Uh, about how they are not getting paid enough to do it, and how much they hated it, and how much they cannot wait to finish the job and to go back to have a beer, to have a shower, or maybe starting their own company. After this, I'm taking the longest shower, sick to the core of glyphed stink, and then I'm getting so drunk. And if you don't know, you can press、uh, Y on an Xbox controller or V on a keyboard if you are playing on PC.、Um, and your characters will say some cool phrase like this: Rock and stone. Are we rocks, stones, or both? Stone and rock. Oh wait. I later found out that the team around Rock and Stone is very common in the DRG franchise. There is also another common team, which is to do it for Carl,、uh, which I find very int- intriguing. Like, who is Carl? What happened to him?、Uh, maybe I need to play some other DRG games to to actually find out. Another thing I find interesting is the class system. This game has four classes, and each classes comes with a their own bonus stats. For example, the scout is this nimble character, so he has higher dodge chance.、Uh, the gunner is supposed to be tanky, so he has higher armor. The driller has drills as hands. That's actually horrible, but hey, he comes with extra mining speed. And the engineer is smart, so he has higher experience gain. The subclasses then build upon the main classes. So each subclass starts with a different weapon. They also have access to different sets of weapon, 
and have perks that benefits from a certain playstyle. To use as an example, one subclass that I find quite interesting is the Interrogator. It is a driller subclass. And at the beginning, I was wondering why is Interrogator a driller subclass? I only realized when I'm making this video, when you are drilling somebody, that means that you are interrogating them. This is actually quite brilliant. Okay, so back to the main topic. The interrogator starts with a flamethrower and have access to uh, damage over time weapons. He also has a perks that makes him do more damage over time by sacrificing raw damage. When you pick up this subclass, the game is actually pushing you to try out a damage over time build, which you normally would not. I think the subclasses adds to the game by encouraging more build diversity and keeping the game fresh. But after trying every subclasses, I find that the second and third subclass are generally harder to play. They start with a weaker starter weapon and requires more luck for the build to come together because you are limited to a certain playstyle. So what ended up happening is when you start a run, you have to choose between the more consistent subclass that have a more powerful starter weapon, has more flexibility and a better chance of completing the run or trying out a weaker but fun build that you might end up frustrated playing because you are struggling in a stage. Overall, I still think that the class system in DRG Survivor is still a strength. It just needs more fine tuning and balancing down the road. I want to actually start talking about the difficulty level of the game. But I think it is important to first discuss the level design to set the scene. There are three biomes in the game and each biome has five hazard levels. The biomes are quite unique from each other. For example, the crystalline cavern are your typical basic stage. Uh, occasionally, there are these crystals that grow from the ground and you can break them down, but it's mostly just for cosmetic. The magma core has lava on the ground that will damage you when you stand on it and the enemy AI will try to avoid the lava which, which makes it quite interesting. The hollow bow have impassable walls and vines that will regrow after you cut them down which can be quite annoying to deal with. One thing to note though is that you will be fighting the same exact enemies across the three biomes. Even the final boss is the same. But I have no complaints in these regards though because the biomes are distinct enough from each other to keep the runs fresh. As you go up the hazard level, the enemies will have more health, they will do more damage to you and the rocks and stones will take longer to mine. That is when the game can get not very enjoyable, the enemies start feeling like bullet sponges and it makes your build feel really weak. This is especially true at the beginning of each run when your character is under leveled and if you are playing most of the second and third subclasses of each class. If you choose the wrong upgrade, the wrong weapon or simply just got unlucky, it can lead to a struggle train of a run very easily. Also, if you do not have enough meta upgrades, higher hazard runs are almost impossible to complete. The extra mining speed, movement speed, damage and defenses increase does affect your ability to do higher hazard runs very significantly. I believe this is where the game gets a lot of criticism for being too difficult. I will have to admit that even I myself almost quit around the 10 hours mark. If you are in the same spot, I would recommend you to watch my top tips and tricks video where I shared how I overcame this difficulty curve and started enjoying the game again. I will leave a link in the description below. Just to share my personal experience, I have completed all hazard three stages after around 30 hours of playtime, but I am just not motivated anymore to push into Hazard 4 and Hazard 5 because I expect the experience is just not going to be very fun. I have tried most of the builds and weapons already anyway. 
even if I want to try some other fun and creative builds, Hazard 4 and 5 are just not the right place to do so. All in all, I do feel that the weapon and subclass balancing in the RG Survivor do need a lot of improvement. They need to make each subclass and weapons feel equally viable in high hazard level stages. Uh, this will make the difficulty feel more justified instead of being unfair because of poor balancing where one wrong decision or a little bit of bad luck can ruin the whole run. I would also suggest that the enemy scaling should be lowered at the earlier stages when your character level is still low. Uh, this will make the earlier run experience a lot more bearable instead of always a unfun struggle. So yes, in summary, I do think that the game is too hard and can feel unfair sometimes. And in my opinion, this is something that do needs to be fixed before the full release of the game. That said, would I still recommend someone to play DRG Survivor? For a $10 price tag, I would say definitely yes. But this is with a caveat that you will struggle and feel frustrated at certain point of the game. And the frustration will not feel fair because you will not immediately know what you need to do differently to get better at the game. But if you persevere and try to get over the harm, the game is actually very rewarding and satisfying to play. Um, that is until you run into another harm, which is where I am now. And maybe that's when you should put down the game for the moment, like I did until the full release of the game. That will be all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, it will mean the world to me if you would leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I also look forward to hear what are your thoughts about DRG Survivor. Did you agree with what I said or do you have a different opinion about the game? Let's bring the conversation further in the comment section below. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.